In the Bible, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, we have the words of Moses, who reports that God told him that he would raise up a prophet from among the brothers of the Israelites, like Moses. Now, Christians wish to apply this to Jesus, to say he was the prophet, like Moses. It's uncomfortable for them to recognize, however, that Jesus was not very much like Moses. Now, Jesus had no father, no wife, no children. He didn't die of old age, and he didn't lead a nation. All of these things Moses had or did. But they say, well, Jesus will return. He'll return as a victorious person, and so he'll be more like Moses. Do they really expect he will return to also acquire a father and a wife and children and then die of old age? Not usually. Moreover, Jesus was an Israelite. The passage of Scripture says that this prophet that was foretold would be raised up from among the brothers of the Israelites, not from the Israelites. In the third chapter of Acts, the disciple Peter speaks to a crowd of people and explains that Jesus has been taken up, and he's in heaven, he says. And he says he will remain in heaven. He cannot return until all the things that were promised by God come to pass. So what are we still waiting for, does he tell the crowd? He quotes this very saying of Moses, saying, For God will raise up a prophet from among the brothers of the Israelites, like Moses, and so on. The point is very clear. Christians like to see this prophet as being Jesus. But read carefully Acts chapter 3. What it says is that Jesus awaits a return. He cannot return until the fulfillment of this prophecy, that another prophet has to come. Jesus spoke of it himself, and the words survived, just barely, but they survive in the Bible. Jesus spoke of God sending another paraclete. Now, there's a lot of argument over the meaning of this word paraclete. For now, we can leave that aside. What is a paraclete? It doesn't matter. The first letter of John shows that Jesus was a paraclete. He's called a paraclete. And we have Jesus promising another paraclete is going to be sent. Now, in English, we lose a lot by this word another because it's ambiguous. If someone's car breaks down and it's a Toyota and I say, I'll go and get you another car, maybe I mean I'll go and get you another Toyota because this one you have is broken. Or maybe I mean forget Toyotas, they're no good, I'll go and get you another car, I'll get you a Datsun. It's ambiguous, the word another in English. But the Greeks had a word for it. When they meant another of the same kind, they said allos. When they meant another of a different kind, they said heteros. And the important thing here is that when Jesus, who was himself a paraclete, said God will send you another paraclete, he used the word allos, not heteros. Christians want to say that this other paraclete that was being sent was different than Jesus. It wasn't a man, it was a spirit. What Jesus said was, God will send you another paraclete, Alos, another one, like me, another man. This is not uniquely a Muslim interpretation. Rudolf Boltzmann, in his 1971 book, The Gospel of John, a commentary, said, The paraclete is therefore a parallel figure to Jesus himself. It is clear from this reference in John 14 and 16, But the source taught that there were two sendings of two paracletes, Jesus and his successor, the one following the other. Muslims believe, of course, that Muhammad is the fulfillment of this prophecy by Jesus. The Quran says that this man is mentioned in the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians. Find this in the 7th surah, 157th ayah. Christians came to expect the return of Jesus because of a Jewish misunderstanding. Messiah and Son of Man had been given special significance by the Jews, even though many people were called by these same names within the Bible. The Jews came to expect a victorious leader. When Jesus didn't turn out to be quite what many expected, they hatched the idea that he would return someday and fulfill all these prophecies. Well, suppose that someone observed Jesus 2,000 years ago and then he left this planet or he went to sleep for 2,000 years and returned today to look for the followers of Jesus. Who would he find? Who would he recognize? Christians? I conclude with just this food for thought. 
The Bible says very clearly that Jesus used to fast. Do Christians fast? Muslims fast. It's obligatory one month of every year. The Bible says that Jesus prayed by touching his forehead to the ground. Do Christians pray in this manner? Muslims do. It's characteristic of their prayer. No one on earth is probably ignorant of that fact. According to Jesus, he told his disciples to greet one another with the expression, peace be with you. Do Christians do that? Muslims do, universally. Whether they speak Arabic or not, the greeting one to another is, Salam alaikum, peace be with you. The brother of Jesus, in the book of James, stated that no man should suggest what he is about to do or highlight his plans for the next few days in any way without adding the phrase, if God wills. Do not say, I will go here and there and do this and that without adding the phrase, if God wills. Do Christians do that? Muslims do, whether they speak Arabic or not. If they so much as suggest that they're going downtown to pick up some groceries, they'll add, Insha'Allah, which in Arabic means, if God will. Those conclude my thoughts on this subject. May Allah guide us always closer to the truth. هل جزاء الإحسان إلا الإحسان؟